Good morning. This lesson is for my honors integrated one class and my integrated one class. But before I get started, I want to say I hope that everyone is doing all right out there. I don't know the title of this lesson. It depends on how I title it. But what I do know are two goals for the day. Our first goal is going to be to define a perpendicular, uh, to define perpendicular, which is also Good morning. This lesson is for my honors integrated class and my integrated one class. But before I get started, I want to say I hope that everyone is doing all right out there. I don't know what I'm going to title this video. It depends. It depends on how I title it, to be honest. But what I do know are two goals for the day. We have our first goal, which is to define perpendicular, or this is a symbol for perpendicular, and to review a bisector of a segment. Our second goal is going to be to walk through the perpendicular bisector theorem and its converse. Remember, converse switches the order. So let's go ahead and jump into our first goal here. Perpendicular, or the symbol for perpendicular, is when two lines, two segments, or whatever, intersect to make a right angle. So an example, I'm saying that line L is perpendicular to line M, so it's going to make a right angle, and I'll just say that the measure of angle 1 is 90 degrees. All right, so this is an example of being perpendicular. Two lines intersecting to make a right angle. But let's, let's look at this a little bit further. What can be concluded about the measure of angle 2, the measure of angle 3, and the measure of angle 4, and why? What can I say about angle 2? What about angle 3? What about angle 4? So maybe uh, hit pause and see if you can come up with your own conclusion here. And then, uh, you know, let's spend a minute or two on that. And then uh, jump back in and see if we're in agreement. And I'm going to start with the measure of angle two. So hopefully you hit pause, jump back, and I'm back. All right, so, well, let's look at this. Angle one and angle two are linear pairs. And you know what? Let me cover this up and show you that. So are angle 1 and angle 4. And what does it mean to be a linear pair? It means that you add 180 degrees. So I can make two equations out of this. I can say the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to 180 degrees. I hope I said it's two angles that add to 180 degrees. Um, but I know the measure of angle 1. The measure of angle 1 is 90 degrees. So I have the measure of angle 1 turning into 90 degrees plus the measure of angle 2. That is equal to 180 degrees. Right. I can subtract this. And I know that the measure of angle 2 must also equal 90 degrees. I can make the same argument for 1 and 4. So instead of having measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2, there's a linear pair, I can make the same argument for a measure of angle 4. So I'm going to just go ahead and save some time and show that the measure of angle 4 is also equal to 90 degrees by the same argument. Alright, so I have Measure of angle 2 is 90 degrees, measure of angle 4 is 90 degrees, but what about angle 3? There's two ways to get there. You could say that angle 3 and angle 2 are uh, linear pairs, angle 4 and angle 3 are linear pairs, or you could have said angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical and vertical angles are equal. Right? So uh, I'll do that way. So angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical. And vertical angles are equal. Slash congruent. So if the measure of angle 1 is 90 degrees, that means that the measure of angle 3 must be 90 degrees.
And what I want to point out about all of this, and this is the, the, the reason why I wanted to talk about angle two, three, and four, is when lines intersect and are perpendicular, they make four right angles, all right? This makes four right angles. Perpendicular lines make four right angles. Okay, perpendicular lines make four right angles. All right. So now let's just review a bisector, a bisector of a segment. So to bisect is to cut in half or to cut into two equal slash congruent parts. An example, point R bisects segment AB. We know that it got cut in half, right? We also know first that uh, we can just let's just focus on the, uh, the the two equal congruent parts. We know that segment AR is going to be congruent to segment RB. And we know that uh, the length of segment AR is going to be equal to the length of segment RB. Right? Uh, I could also say that point M is a mid, or point R is a midpoint. But I'm going to stop with what I need from this because really I only need this fact and this fact to uh, accomplish what we're going to do today. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean all of this off, come back and we'll walk through the perpendicular bisector theorem and its converse, and then hopefully I can explain to you um, what it actually means and, and how to actually use it. So let me clean all of this up and I'll be back. I'm back, so let's go ahead and jump into our second goal here, and that's to walk through the perpendicular bisector theorem and its converse. But before I start talking about the perpendicular bisector theorem and its converse, I better talk about what a perpendicular bisector is. So let's go ahead and jump into our second goal. A perpendicular bisector is a segment or a line that bisects a segment and is perpendicular to the bisected segment. So basically, to translate this, is a perpendicular bisector cuts a segment in half and makes a right angle, right? So here we have an example as a picture. We can see that segment AB got cut in half because I know that these two segments are the equal and it makes a right angle. So line L is a perpendicular bisector of segment AB because it makes a right angle and cuts a segment AB into two equal congruent parts. I just said that, I repeat myself a lot. Maybe I should just read what I wrote and then it'll be a little bit shorter for you guys. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the perpendicular bisector theorem. If, and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm writing it this way to separate the hypothesis from the conclusion. So when we look at the converse, it's a little bit more clear how these things move around. But if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then that point is equal distance from the endpoints of the segment. So, if a point is on the perpendicular bisector, it is the same distance from the endpoints. Okay. And again, when we do the converse, we're going to take the conclusion and switch it with the hypothesis and put the hypothesis where the conclusion was. All right. So, let's look at an example of this. Point S is on the perpendicular bisector of segment JK. No, seriously, segment JK. Um, so, I have a point on the perpendicular bisector. Point S is on the perpendicular bisector. I know it's on it because it cut segment JK, no seriously, segment JK, the two congruent segments, and it made a right angle. So the claim is, if the point is on that, then it's the same distance from the endpoints of the segment. So the point is on the perpendicular bisector, so then that means that the distance from J to S is the same as from K to S. So that I could say that uh, the segment, if I connected them, they would be congruent. Or the length from uh, point J to point S is the same as it is from point K to point S. Or if I just draw a segment, I would have two congruent segments in the picture, but I said that already. I'd like to come back and talk about the why. Why does this work? So we're just going to look at it a little bit and... Um, 
and exp and hopefully we'll be able to explain the why it works. So I'm giving you guys a hint. It has something to do with the Pythagorean theorem. So maybe try and see if you can set it up and work through it. Um, and and if you can see if your uh, result matches my result, and maybe it'll make some sense. So um, let me go ahead and erase all this. Set up the explanation as to why this works. And then again, it's not a proof. I'm just going to walk you through and and hopefully explain to you why it, it, it makes sense. So let me clean this up and I'll be back. I'm back. So let's go ahead and get started with this. You know, I'm going to hold on one second. I feel this fucking needs to go away. I'm back, so go, let's go ahead and jump into our second goal and walk through, continue with our second goal and walk through uh, the, the argument behind the perpendicular bisector theorem. So we're going to start with point S that's on the perpendicular bisector of a segment JK, no seriously. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to connect J to S and K to S and we create two right triangles, J, S, T and triangle KST. We now have two right triangles. And since we have two right triangles, what we can actually do is we can write the Pythagorean theorem for each triangle. So what I have here is the length of JT squared plus the length of TS squared is equal to the length SJ squared. That's for this little right triangle. Remember, when we perpendicular bisect, we make four right angles. So this is also a right triangle. Um, and looking at the second right triangle, the length of KT squared plus the length of TS squared is equal to the length of SK squared. So remember that segment JK, no seriously, got uh, bisected. So it can be cut into two equal slash congruent parts. So the length from JT is equal to the length from KT. They're equal. Which means that if I square these lengths, I should have the same number, right? If 3 is equal to 3, then 3 squared is equal to 3 squared, which is 9 equals 9. So we have equal numbers, and we square the equal numbers, we should get equal results. So the length of JT squared is equal to the length of KT squared. And if we substitute the length of JT squared for the length of KT squared into this equation, so I'm going to replace this with this, we get the following. The length of JT squared plus the length of TS squared is equal to the length of SK squared. Which means we have created the transitive property. The length of SK squared and the length of SJ squared are equal to the same thing. The length of SK squared and SJ squared are equal to the length of TS squared plus the length of JT squared. We have the transitive property here. So since they're equal to the same thing, they must be equal. So the length of S, uh, the length of the segment, or the length of side S K squared is equal to the length of side S J squared. Ugh, my tongue is all twisted. Now we can square root both sides, and we get the length from, or the length of uh, side S K is equal to the length of side S J. All right, this these lengths are actually the distances to the endpoints. Right, remember, the theorem says if a point is on the perpendicular bisector, it's got the same distance to the endpoints, right? So we've argued that point S is the same distance to J as it is to K. So this shows a point on the perpendicular bisector is equal distance from the endpoints of a segment. We argued in one direction. So we're going to flip it, and we're going to come back and talk about what it means to be the same distance from the endpoints and determine if it's on the perpendicular bisector. So let me go ahead and erase all this, um, come back, set up the argument, and I'll be back. I'm back, so let's go ahead and uh, almost finish our second goal. I'm gonna film one more, uh, one more section where I just tie together everything this lesson was about. But um, we're gonna walk through why the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem is true. So um, 
Again, remember when we have the converse, we switch the uh, hypothesis and conclusion. So if a point is equal distance from the endpoint of a segment, then that point is on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. Here's a visual of what we're saying. Point S, now notice the line of the segments are dashed. It, they're not really supposed to be there, but the claim is the hypothesis is point S is the same distance to K as it is to J on the segment, the endpoints. Then point S must be on the perpendicular bisector for the segment JK. No, seriously. Um, so, again, understand that the length from S to K is the same as the length from S to J, and I, and I wrote that out, but we're going to need this later in this argument. So, again, um, let me explain why this works. So, let's start with, uh, let's start with this triangle, right? So, I connected this, um, and we can draw a segment from point S to segment JK, no seriously, so it is perpendicular. Call the intersection point T. And remember, from S to K is the same as from S to J. All right. All right. We need to show that uh, the length of JT is equal to the length of KT. Right? I already, have, I already have point S being on the perpendicular, but I have to argue that these two segments are the same so that I have bisected that segment. Now we have two right triangles and we can write the Pythagorean theorem for each. So for this first triangle, the length of JT squared plus the length of TS squared is equal to the length of SJ squared. And for the second right triangle, the length of KT squared plus the length of TS squared is equal to the length of SK squared. But remember, we started with the length of SJ equal to the length of SK. So that means if I take this length and I multiply it by itself, it should be equal to this length if I multiply itself. So the length of SJ squared is equal to the length of SK squared. And we need that because when we substitute the length of SK squared in for SJ squared, we're going to take this value and replace it with this, we get the following two equations. Notice that these two equations are equal to the same thing. So we have the transitive property again. And so you, uh, hopefully you're starting to see over and over and over again the use of the transitive property in these arguments. Right, so um, let's, uh, let's see here. What's common to both sides? I can subtract away the uh, length of TS squared to both sides. That cancels, that cancels, and then I'm going to be left with the length of JT squared is equal to the length of KT squared. And if I square root both sides, um, let's see, the length of JT squared and the length of KT squared, that means that the length of JT is equal to the length of KT. And if the length of JT is equal to the length of KT, then that means that the segment JK, no seriously, the segment JK has been bisected. So not only is point S on the perpendicular line that intersects this segment, it's also on the, the, uh, the, the perpendicular bisector because we just argued that these must be the same. Now, I didn't argue this the way that the book did it. The book argued it in an in argument style called proof by contradiction. And basically, you know something's true, you assume it, it to be false, you make an argument, and then you catch the argument in a lie. I don't think that that's fair to put on you guys at this level, so I, I want to just keep practicing transitive, practicing transitive, so you start to get a feel, start looking who you can get to be equal to the same thing, and go from there. So let me, uh, let me erase all of this, come back and summarize this lesson. I'll be back one more time, I promise. So let me clean this up and I'll be back. I'm back for the last time, I promise. So let's just summarize what we, uh, what we went through on this lesson. So here I'm starting with point T on the perpendicular bisector. Okay, so point D, point T is on this line that cuts segment XY into two equal parts and makes a right angle. So we get that the length from X to point T will be equal to the length from Y to point T. These two segments that I haven't drawn, or these two lengths are equal. 
So we can start with being on the perpendicular bisector and getting equal lengths to that point, or we can start with the point being equal distance to the endpoints of the segment. So the distance from H to K will be the same as the distance from I to K, right? That's what this is saying. And it's saying this as an equation. And if this is true, we get that point K is on the perpendicular bisector of segment HI, which means segment HI is cut into two equal slash congruent parts. Somehow, some way, the homework in this book is going to be about going from here to here or here to here and, 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 and using those concepts. So hopefully I was able to articulate why these ideas work and hopefully you'll be able to figure out how to apply them in the homework. Um, again, I hope everybody is doing all right out there. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>